All right, guys, welcome back. In the last one, uh, we created our project folder and we set up our index.html file. So this is what we had done last time. We had a simple image and we pasted it into the document and we rendered it in the browser. So today we'll talk about the fundamentals of the web. So first of all, uh, the fundamentals of the web are HTML, CSS, and JS. Let's start with um, HTML. It's the structure of the page. CSS is the style of a web page and how everything looks. And uh, JavaScript is the functionality. If you take a house, for example, the metal structure and the concrete walls is the HTML, the paint job, and uh, the various finishes and the textures is the CSS, and the lights and switches are JavaScript. In this chapter, uh, I'll cover HTML basics. So, what are the HTML basics? Uh, HTML is first of all a hypertext markup language. Um, it is considered the structure of a web page. You structure the web page with a bunch of HTML elements like paragraphs, headings, sections, lists, tables, etc. In HTML, you write elements using opening and closing tags. Elements can have attributes. Attributes provide more info to the browser. Elements can be nested inside each other. And elements that have only opening tags are called empty elements. So let's get into what some of those look like. Let's just clear this out for the time being. Okay, so this, these angle brackets, is an opening tag. This is a closing tag. It's those angle brackets with a forward slash in between. And what we have to put inside here is the name of the tag. Let's say paragraph. So that's an opening paragraph tag and a closing paragraph tag. What we put in the middle is called the content. We'll write hello world. So this is the opening tag. This is the closing tag. This is the content. The entire thing is called the paragraph element. So let's save this and refresh this page and you'll see that this is a paragraph. So this is how an element is structured. Next, elements can have attributes. They provide more info to the browser. So what do those look like? Let's say we have the same paragraph. Okay, I'm not going to copy that. Let's just, I mean, I'm not going to write that again. Let's just copy this, control C. So an attribute could be as such. You will get to what this means later on, but just understand how attributes are structured. Okay, so we have a class attribute with we have a class attribute equal to intro para so this is how an attribute is created class which is this class is called the attribute name intro is the attribute value there should be a space before every attribute. After the attribute name, you have to have an equal sign. And the attribute value has to be inside double quotes. So this is how we create an attribute. Okay. Right now, if we save this and refresh it. Nothing really happens because we added this. That's because we haven't set this attribute to do anything specific, but we'll get to that later. That's why it just displays the regular hello world. Next, we had elements. Elements can, uh, nested elements. Elements can be nested inside each other. So let's see what that looks like. 
you can put elements inside other elements. If you wanted hello, let's say, to be bolded strong, uh, let's see what that looks like. If I paste in hello world again, but I wanted hello to be in bold, what I would do is put a strong tag over here, strong, and after hello, I close the strong tag. I save it, and then when I refresh, you'll see a hello world with hello as bold. Now you have to be careful when you're nesting elements. Because if you don't nest elements properly, uh, for example, let's say you wanted to bold world. So what you would do is something like, let's say you wanted a bold world, what would that look like? You'd write strong, and let's say you put strong here. This is wrong. It'll work, but it's wrong. You might get this result correctly as you intended because the browser guesses what you were trying to say correctly. But once you start having a lot of things on your website, you will be in trouble if you try relying on the browser's guesswork. Okay, so remember that these nested child elements have to be completely inside the parent element. So the correct way to do this would be control. Right? It would be here. So you can see the, the nested element is completely inside the parent element. So that's nested element. Finally, we have empty elements, which have only opening tags. They don't have a second closing tag. An example of that is the image element that we've seen before. So let's have a look at that once again. So we had an image, right? Now we don't write image like this. We don't have a closing tag for image. There is only an opening tag. An opening tag that contains an attribute called source. In this we put the, uh, the location of the image file. So ours was html.png. This was the file, this was the html logo that we saved in our images folder. And we have an alt attribute that uh, where we would provide a description of uh, the file. So let's say HTML logo. If we run this now, and if we save that and refresh this, you'll see the HTML logo. I'll give you an example of what this alt HTML logo does actually. Let's change the name of this which means now this link is wrong. Okay, this link is wrong now because there isn't a file exactly called html.png. There is only html5.png in our images folder. If I save this and refresh, you see the alternate text is displayed, html logo. So that's the use of that. So this was basically the, to show you what empty elements look like. There is no need for such a closing element because we usually use a closing element to put some content in between but an html element doesn't need, uh, but an image element like uh, like an image element doesn't require this because it contains all the information it needs inside the opening element it, itself through attributes okay next we'll move on to the anatomy of an html document so an HTML document contains a doc type tag, which tells the browser you're using HTML. It contains HTML tags. It's called the root element. It contains a head and body tag. The head tag contains information about your web page, and the body tag contains everything that that's actually displayed in the browser window. So let's see what that looks like. 
you can see previously we've been working like this but this way is wrong because you might not get every browser to function properly if we don't have that doc type and HTML tags uh, added to our document. So let's remove all this. And let's start writing an HTML document properly. The proper way of writing an HTML document. So this is how an HTML document is structured. First of all, you have an exclamation mark, doc type tag that says HTML. This tells the browser that you're using HTML5. You really don't need any more information on this. Just remember to add the exclamation mark and that doc type has to be capitalized. HTML is not case sensitive. The second thing you need to add are HTML tags. HTML, HTML. This is called the root of the document. You'll understand when you get to learn a lot more, but for now, just remember that it's called the root element, okay? You'll, you'll put all your HTML code inside these HTML documents, uh, this, this HTML tag. This tag contains the head and body tag. So we'll have a head and we'll also have a body we'll get the body in a bit we'll talk about head first the head tag will contain all the information that is required for your website but will not actually be displayed in the window this could be links to your css files that you created links to your javascript files that you created uh, sorry, uh, not links to your JavaScript files that will be in your body, but it could technically be in the head as well, but never mind. Okay, you, it could also contain font links, it could contain keywords and page descriptions for search engines to identify your website, it can also contain um, character set declarations. Okay, so let's talk about some of these uh, things that we can add into the head tag. First of all, let's talk about the meta tag. Meta. Once again, this is an empty element. So meta takes character set as an attribute and the value is UTF-8. This basically tells the browser that the character encoding that you're using for your website is UTF-8. Just uh, know that you have to write this. It just keeps everything clean and that's all you need to know basically about meta character set is equal to utf8 you can have other meta tags that contain more information like uh, like uh, like the page width and um, uh, there's more information i right off the top of my head i'm not able to recall it okay then uh, another thing you can add is the title of your page uh, so if we add title this is a title tag. You can put your heading in here. So suppose I write my project website. And if I save this, you'll see uh, right now nothing's in the body. That's because we haven't added anything in the body. But you'll see that the browser tab displays the title of my web page, my project website. You see? My project website. So that basically concludes meta, title, and head. Next, we'll actually get to the body. Inside here is where we'll be doing most of our code. This will contain all the stuff that users actually see when they visit your website, okay? Uh, like articles, headings, images, videos, everything. You'll learn the majority of everything inside the body tag. Now that you know, all these basics will start to creating uh, something uh, a basic website let's begin with the um, image tag so first of all let me just tell you a couple of elements that we can use we'll be using headings okay a heading is uh, and used by and you uh, is, is an h1 tag 
a paragraph is a p tag. Lists, uh, you can have, uh, there are two types of lists, unordered list and ordered list. An unordered list is uh, represented by ul and ordered list by ol. This is how a list is contained. You have a list. In this case, it's an unordered list and you have list items inside. List item is represented by li tag. You can have uh, links which are represented by anchor tag, which is a tag. This is an example. And finally, we have image, uh, which is represented by the ing image tag. So we'll be using headings, paragraphs, lists, links, and images okay so let's get to work let's see what this looks like so inside our body tag let's first insert that image because uh, you've seen that image before so let's add an image tag okay so img and image the first attribute is the location of the image which is source so we say dot images inside the images folder slash html5 dot png. Then we add the alternate description, which is by, which is called the alt attribute. And here we provide a description of the image in case something went wrong when loading the image. So that's that. Let's save this and refresh this yay so we have our html logo on the website right. now there are a couple of things that you need to remember about the image tag the first is uh, the source attribute is the location of the file relative to the index.html file now the alt attribute is important for two reasons one is if the image is not able to load for, for some reason, the user will know what was supposed to be in that location. You get it? Like, for example, if I change the name of that and refresh this, we still get to know what was intended to be here, but for some reason that's failed. So let's get that back there. Save and refresh. The second reason why we use the alt attribute is for visually impaired people. Uh, they use software called uh, screen readers. What they do is they read out aloud uh, what's on the page. So when the alt attribute is present, they will be able to understand what's actually being displayed on the screen. Next, we'll get into a heading, which is an H1 tag. So we can have h1s, we can have uh, headings all the way from h1 to h6. Let's create a simple heading for our web page. Let's put that above our image tag. So we'll call this opening and closing tags. So we have h1 and a closing heading tag. So we'll say amazing website. Save this. Refresh and you see our heading amazing website followed by the image that we had placed in second place So that's how we write heading now you can have uh, headings all the way ranging from uh, H1 to H6 Okay, but you will mostly be using only only about H1 to H3 So these different headings what they do is they show uh, they act as subheadings and it gives you a uh, a perspective on the hierarchy of the document. Now, let's add two smaller headings, let's say. Okay, so we add an H2 and we say second heading. Now we say, uh, we'll say subheading one. Subheading one. And let's say, okay, these spaces don't matter. It's just for us to read carefully, uh, clearly. So we add another heading. We'll call this subheading 2. So let's see what that looks like. Save and refresh. 
So now you see these headings are smaller than H1 and H2 is smaller than NH1, right? Now, so that was headings. Next, what do we have? We had paragraphs. So let's add a paragraph to our first heading. Let's go into lorem ipsum, lorem ipsum website that we checked out. Lorem ipsum. Where was that? There we go. Lorem ipsum generator. So we come here and we just simply create a paragraph. Okay, so we have this paragraph. We copy this. Sorry. Copy. And we'll paste that inside our P tag. So we say P. Second P. Closing tag. And paste. So there we go. Now let's do the same thing for our second paragraph. Okay. And save. Come back and to our website and refresh and see what it looks like. There. Now you can see we're getting a bit of structure to our website. We have a heading, we have an image, then we have a subheading one with a paragraph and a subheading two with a paragraph. Great. Next, let's think about some lists. So we have an unordered list and an ordered list. Let's, um, under the second heading, let's add a list of uh, projects, okay? Let's do that. Under this heading, we'll call this, uh, we'll call this projects. We'll call that heading projects. We'll use an ordered list to list your work experience. So we have, we create an ordered list and inside we add list items. So we can copy this list item and paste it down. So we have three places we worked before. So what we'll do, right now if I save this and refresh, you'll see that we have Oh, that was a mistake. Sorry. This mistake is we didn't put the closing tag of OL. That's why it looks like that. If I save and refresh again, there we go. Once again, LI has to be closed. That's why we have six, but actually we have only three. Save, refresh. There we go. That's correct. Now you see an ordered list has a uh, is numbered. So let's say job one, job two, job three, and save and refresh. So there you see now you have a list. Let's create another list for heading two. Let's create the uh, unordered list. We'll call this projects. And just like we did that, we'll copy this again just to make this faster. Okay, but I'll change OL to UL. Now instead of numbers, we'll get bullet points. Instead of job, it'll say Project 1, Project 2, and Project 3. So you see now when we refresh, you see the difference between an ordered list that has numbers and an unordered list that has bullet points. We'll call this work. So 
that's what lists look like. Finally, we'll talk about links. Now, you can do two things with links. You can link to another web page. Okay, we'll give a link to a Wikipedia page about web development. So let's see what that looks like. Let's add a link over here. So a link is, rep is represented by an anchor tag. And inside here, we write the text, which is click here. So this is the text, click here. And we have to say where this link will lead to. So that's represented by the href attribute. So href is equal to, and let's look at, let's copy the link of a Wikipedia page. Let's say web development wiki okay so let's see that oh this is a very nice page about web development so let's copy that control c and we'll paste that inside href and we'll save this file and let's come back to project site refresh and now you can see there's a link that says click here if I change this to, let's say, Wikipedia link, save this and refresh, you'll see it says Wikipedia link. If I click on that, you'll see our website goes to the Wikipedia page. Yay, so that's how we use links. Alternatively, you can also link uh, a use anchor tags to link to a specific part of your own web page. We'll navigate back to the top of the page. Okay, so let's see how that's done. Let's add another link that says A and we'll say back to top. Okay, what we would write inside here is href is equal to the location right so what we'll write is we'll call this top heading okay then what we'll do is we'll call this h1 we'll give this h1 this name top heading right so we'll call that id is equal to top heading and then we click save so what will happen now is when you click on this link that says back to top it's linked to an element on this page that's named top heading that element is this h1 here that says top heading so I save this and refresh and you should see a link that says back to top. If I click that, you see the page bounces back to the top. Try that again, back to top. That means it's gone back to this top side of the page. So there we go. Just to brush over everything we've just done. Fundamentals of the web is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, HTML is the structure, CSS is the looks, JavaScript is the functionality. In HTML, we have elements and they contain opening and closing tags. Elements can have attributes. Attributes provide information. Elements can be nested inside each other. Elements sometimes have only opening tags, like the image element, and they're called empty elements. You can't just put all your stuff inside an HTML document, okay? They have to be inside a structure. The first element in that structure is the doc type HTML. It tells the browser using HTML5. Then you have an HTML tag, it's called the root element. This will contain all your HTML code. Inside this, you have two main elements which is the head and the body inside the head you put information about the web page inside the body you can put all the information that's actually displayed on the browser finally what this is all what comes inside the body headings are represented by h1 to through h6 
paragraphs are represented by the P element. Lists are represented by UL for unordered list and OL for ordered lists. And list items are contained inside these lists and they are represented by LIs. Links are represented by anchor tags, which is why the A tag. Anchors contain an attribute called href, which contains the link to where you want to link to and the text of your link. Finally, we have images, which is represented by the img tag, the image tag. The image tag contains two attributes, the source, which contains the link of the image and the alternate text of the image. Uh, practice this at home and if you can brush through all this once again, uh, make a simple web page for yourself and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.